Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today we will discuss Chapter 7 of Freemasons for Dummies, The Symbols of Freemasonry. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have three of our usual hosts, Brother Craig Graham from Kalamalka Lodge Number 160 in Vernon, British Columbia, David Colbeth from uh, King Solomon Lodge Number 60 in Auburn, Washington, and I'm Matt Apple, and I'm a member of Mill Creek Number 243, and we meet in Mutt Lake Terrace, Washington. And uh, I should feel like I should start off by saying, for those of you who noticed that we were on Chapter 5 and now we're on Chapter 7, there is a Chapter 6 in the book. There, um, It does say pretty early on in that chapter, uh, the, the author says, essentially, if you're interested in masonry, if you're, he doesn't disclose any secrets or anything, but if you're interested in masonry, you're going to be going into the, through the degrees. He sort of recommends skipping that section to um, preserve the, I want to say surprise, but that's not the right word, the impression that the ritual will make upon you the, the discovery the discovery, the discovery of new experiences as he puts it yes there we go i, I underlined that part it was because yeah he talks about the ceremonies of freemasonry and and i like that line the discovery of new experiences so i'm going to try and adopt that language but that is a good one yeah i always i always caution people not to look too much stuff up on the internet because a half of it's wrong and more than half <laughs> and two it's it you know, sort of ruins the the discovery there you go I, yeah, I will he, say my yeah. usual, my other caveat to new guys is uh, that for those who are not of the necessarily Christian bent, that a lot, or Judeo-Christian bent, that a lot of our ritual comes from, you know, started in England in the 1700s, 1600s, 1500s by a bunch of white guys. And what did a bunch of white guys in England in the 17, 16, 1500s know that was important to them? The Bible. So a lot of the, a lot of the Ritual, a lot of the lessons of masonry comes from the Bible. So it's not a it's not a Christian organization per se, but it is a that is the roots of it. And so we sort of have to acknowledge that. In my opinion, I acknowledge that to the new guys saying, you know, if you know, we're not proselytizing here, it's just sort of the stories that we've adopted. So that's we're also born born out of the Stonemasons Guild. And what did they largely build that made them so important? Cathedrals. Yep. Yeah. So so there you go. That, that's chapter six in a nutshell. Good stuff. <laughs> all right. right. We're Night, everyone. We'll see you all later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> so chapter seven is the symbols of Freemasonry. And it goes through through a lot of the, it's, yeah, a lot of symbols in there. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts where you'd like to start? I guess we could start at the beginning of the chapter and work our way through. It's usually good to start at the beginning. Not always. Good stories no. unravel when you don't do that, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah um, for those who might not know, masonry has a lot of symbols involved in it, and there is it is a I mean what is it a I always get this quote wrong a system of morality veiled in allegory and illustrated with symbols. So yeah, a, it's, it's a a peculiar system of morality. Yeah, I I just always like to make sure that one word is in there because it just just adds that little extra. Uh, extra element into it. Oh yeah, it's uh symbols are are woven throughout masonry. I mean, heck, most masons I know would say just about everything we do is a symbol of something. Yeah, he he opens the chapter by I mean, the first line: symbolism is a tricky business, and he goes on to describe a particular symbol that has become to be known as a a, a vicious and wicked symbol in kind of modern. Uh, modern times but previous to that he said he, when they were visiting uh some temples in italy there was that symbol all throughout and it used to be a good symbol if you will or potentially good symbol and had become a symbol of bad and evil uh later in life and so it's interesting how symbols can mean different things and have a much deeper meaning to them and just like we, just like for us as Freemasons. This is always my question about symbols is 
So um, I had a conversation with somebody once that the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor is, in his mind, was a, in fact, a statue of Hecate, the, the Greek goddess of, I forget what exactly. But he is, you know, that was what the symbol meant to him, whereas to the vast majority of Americans, it means something else entirely. And is is it that there is a prescribed meaning for each symbol? Does the square only mean this, or does the, the compass or the skull or whatever only mean A, B, and C? Or if it means something else to me, is that just as valid? I, I always have a, I wrestle with this inside my head. Yeah, I, you know, you talk about the Statue of Liberty and there's a lot of ideals, I, or, uh, stories and things out there that claim it's a satanic symbol or something satanic because it's called a Lucifer. And what is a Lucifer? If you look at the meaning of the word Lucifer, it's a bearer of light. And so, yes, yeah, she is a, a symbol. She has a light in her hand, a lantern in her head. So she is, yes, yeah, so a bearer of light. And what was Lucifer at the time? He was the angel of light. That was, you know, again, diving into the Roman Catholic ideals of, of belief systems. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I would agree. Symbols can be multifaceted and probably should be multifaceted, especially when you take them in as personal. And... While we, and I assume we'll, we'll continue through them, maybe almost symbol by symbol, but we Freemasonry as a craft has said, we want you to remember this thing or this story or this ideal when you consider this symbol. I think if we don't take that symbol in and make it our own, then we may not be fully understanding or fully learning what the story is or the allegory is related to the symbol and that's isn't that when you when you, you know, when you bring a, bring a new guy in you want him to learn the proficiency and all that kind of stuff is it really it's not really we always say it's not just about the words it's about understanding what the words mean or what the what it's about right and there's always there's there used to be another uh podcast i loved the uh, um oh ex oriente podcast there's a, a guy mm -hmm. out of chicago is really good yeah. uh, i don't think he makes it anymore but he had a couple of episodes about a uh, a method of analysis uh, called Pardes, I think was the name of it, where you looked at the, there was the surface level of obviously what something meant, and then there's the secondary level, and there was a tertiary level, and a, and a fourth level. And it was, as you analyze things and look at them in context and that sort of stuff, it was really interesting. And I've, as you said, I, you know, the what the symbol says in our ritual or in our um, monitor, what it means is not is usually the top level maybe second level of of analysis of what the symbol might mean yeah yeah he, he relates it very clearly as part of this highlighted a symbol is an object or design of other material that stands in for something abstract or even invisible and i i thought that was really interesting invisible something is invisible and isn't that what we're again the, the theory what we're supposed to be doing with freemasonry is we're trying to uh, to make visible or make understanding out of something we don't understand to to bring the new man into the light or into some some other aspect <clears throat> and to un open up their understanding to make visible what is invisible to we talked before about uh, if I can get this right that faith isn't how can I say what was it now um, I, I'm missing it. Um, that f that oh, that we talk about faith being lost in sight, and we had an, there was a discussion, Masonic, of course, Masonic discussion, <laughs> about what does that really mean? Does it mean that you lose faith that because faith is lost? No, it's that you don't need to trust anymore. You don't need to believe anymore because now you've seen it it's sight you, you've seen it happen you've seen the physical or you've experienced the physical or whatever or it's it's become part of you and so you don't need to have faith as we think anymore it's now it's no longer invisible right so that that symbol has become real to you Maybe I'm well, stretching a little more <laughs> well, I, perhaps only as much of it as you actually need as you 
need to see to satisfy some some part of it, um, which leads to its own thing. I just wanted to mention something that if we go back to the uh, Statue of Liberty and Hecate for a second, or Hecate as I've always pronounced it, uh, she is variously associated with crossroads, which is very symbolic of somebody that represents immigration to a new new port. Uh, night, light, magic, protection from witchcraft, drugs, and the moon. <laughs> That's so that was, you know, the 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 Greeks and Romans always referred to the, um, you know, the the worship domain around the gods as cults but that so obviously the the components of her cults were were you know night light magic drugs moon i would imagine if she was around in the 20th century there'd be some psychedelic music in there as well perhaps some <laughs> you know, perhaps a, a a a lava lamp or two you know um but uh i you know it's 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 interesting though that that's and that was okay i i, I will We'll award that with a caveat. That was from Wikipedia, which of course is a child of the internet. We've already commented on on veracity and 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 the internet and the problems thereof. Um, yeah, I, I uh, this is this is something that's always fascinated me because here here's something I I knew what the Masonic symbols were for a very very long time before I ever stepped into lodge. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a recognizable symbol. Um, and it's it it you know it, and in that sense, if you put it on a building, that indicates that there's a that's a place where um, those people who belong to the organization of that symbol meet, right? And uh, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm kind of losing myself in that one, but you guys know where I'm going with that, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and they i mean he talks about it later is that symbols need some kind of explanation especially if they're unfamiliar so you need to have some context that you, like you said you knew what a square was maybe you've seen it in a toolbox or you've seen a compass yeah. as you've used them in school or whatever yeah. so we knew these instruments they were familiar to us but we didn't have a secondary or tertiary or an invisible understanding of them that we do now so i agree completely craig that's so that, that that was as you say that that was your surface level there okay well that's that's a building where they meet so what what's an expert well you have to join and find out and i think um you know the very earliest beginnings i think of the christian faith were basically as a secret society in some ways because of persecution and am i right um was it the symbol of the fish that was often used as the you know, we use it now. You see it stuck on car bumpers, on T-shirts, and things like that. But I think at one time I was it was mentioned to me that it was it was a very it was a, a much more um, potent symbol. That if people saw it and people knew what it was, that was an indication that uh, uh, there were other Christians and that there was there there was perhaps safety and uh, and, and or at least advice and uh, movement that way. I was just thinking, couldn't, and we've talked in other sessions, I think, about the idea that, especially when we talked about co-masonry or females in masonry or anything associated with that, that we uh, we, sh we we should be encouraged, uh, Alekhem Elias, uh, Arak, Arak, I'm not going to say his name correctly, the... the uh, <laughs> Sorry, if anybody's listening, you can look it up. But anyway, he was at the Conference of Grand Masters. He talked about the idea that that the, the we need to embrace the idea of women in general, and not not that whether they want to be Freemasons or not, but the idea that they there is a stronger presence, and that if we aren't careful, it's a gavel strike away from being required to allow females in our lodges. And what, what I can do that there is that. These lessons, a lot of them, most of them even, aren't things that we couldn't understand outside of masonry and couldn't be well used outside of masonry. Certainly, we then take it again, maybe that to that third or fourth level or to the next invisible stage as a mason to provide additional ideas or stories behind them, but the ideas of... Uh, being square and being honest with people and being uh, trying to maintain yourself within due bounds, all those kind of things are, pr should be pretty universal, I would think. So why, 
why is it maybe that we don't? I mean, what struck me was when you said, if you want to learn more, come to the lodge. Well, I would agree with that. It just it hit me like, oh, well, why aren't we doing a better job? It's, it's kind of it's the same argument I have with the, the higher degrees, the York Rite degrees and the Scottish Rite degrees. Why aren't they coming to Blue Lodge and tell me as a Blue Lodge, as a third degree master mason, why can't I know everything there is to know about masonry? Why do I need to have to become a Scottish Rite Mason or a York Rite Mason or whatever secret handshake of the blue underground? To, <laughs> to, to, right? to, why do I need to do that to learn what they know? Why can't I know that? And so why aren't you in those organizations coming to Blue Lodge and teaching us some of these things? And then we might go, oh, how did where did you learn that? Well, we learned it over in the York Rite. Sit down. Let me talk to you about it some more mm -hmm. and give me more, give me more, give me more. And I go, oh, you know, kind of feed me Seymour, bring it in and sell me on it rather than, well, if you want to know more, you're going to come in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Matt, your mic. Man, it is a, it's a rough night over here in the Apple household. Yeah. <laughs> um, I almost kind of feel like that's what we're kind of doing here. We're saying, Hey, there, these symbols are out there and you can think, figure them out for yourself, but you want to join lodge. To and, figure and, that do, out. And, and I would throw it back to, are we doing this kind of stuff in our lodges and in, even in our smaller groups? Are we having this discussion? Often not. I would bet paying the bills and going home. Maybe there's someone that stands up and reads the section on the square or on the compasses or on something, the six, seven, or the Cardinal Votures of Masonry or something and talks about them, but are they really taught or are they just reading and are, and are they discussed? That's even more important. Are they having this casual mm -hmm. conversation around Freemasonry? What does that mean? But are they taking a symbol or an idea or whatever? I think we talked about it before we we've started something in our lodge and one of the first topics that came up was uh, a, new, a new member to our lodge came in and said, why do we tile? Why do we tile our lodges? And why is it the first and last great care of masonry? And that was an hour and a half discussion or <laughs> two hour discussion sitting around, you know, what does it mean? How does it work? And, you know, how, what does it mean to ourselves and to the lodge and all these kind of things? And so, I love those kind of things. I don't know all the answers for sure. Obviously, obviously, if anybody's listed for me for, for the ten minutes or not, I don't know everything. I don't know hardly anything, but I can ask questions about it. We can work it out together. Anyway, well, it's 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 interesting to think of that though because this all affects us in different ways, and when we can see it manifested in in anything we uh, we do, you know. Some some people have a passing interest in a hobby. Other people go very, very deeply um, and passionately and financially into it. Um, you know, in, in masonry, you have, we all know that the brothers that, that show up, they enjoy themselves, but they don't really make their presence in the lodge known. And we have others um, who are, are much more, you know, spend way too much money on books, guilty, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that have a, a much, uh, you know, a pursuit of a much deeper, um, trying to find a much deeper meaning in, in, in all of this. And none of those uh, pursuits are really, one is not really better than the other. It's just how, uh, like, you, you know, there's your surface symbol and there's the second meaning. We all know, it, it, for those of us that have attended church in our lives, we all know people that just show up, put money in the, uh, um, in the offering uh, basket and, and pass it along and that's it. We'll see you next week. And then others are inspired by, um, you know, the teachings of Christ to take up a mission and go away for years and, and spread the gospel. So it, it, it uh, we, you know, the, and, and the symbolism leads each of us into our own uh, path in that, in that regard. And it, 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 but it also depends on how well um, the, the others around us are explaining those symbols I think. I agree. And uh, I will say, though, as a church treasurer, the, those people who just show up and put money in the plate, we, we appreciate them, too. <laughs> they're they are akin to the guys who pay their dues at Lodge and, then, and yeah. don't show up to meetings. But God, God bless you all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, it's interesting, too, that he talks about even the idea of the Blue Lodge being a symbol. I guess I never really thought about it in that way. 
but he considers the Blue Lodge to be a symbol, which I guess it is. It's a symbol of masonry. You know, he says the lodge down the street from you is probably a Blue Lodge, most definitely a Blue Lodge. What does that mean? It's the the craft. We have lots of different terms for craft lodge, symbolic lodge, all those kind of things, and it's, it symbolizes what we call ancient craft masonry. But it's it symbolizes the work or the body of Freemasonry. The Blue Lodge does even though there's other things. And I, I don't know if I agree with his interpretation that the blue word came from the blue sky often painted on the ceiling. Maybe. I mean, they, they say that the York right is the red lodge, but that's because they wear the red coats. I don't know that we've ever worn bright blue suits. Maybe, maybe they did years ago or something, but uh, I, it's interesting to know what, do you have any, what do you guys, have you heard any stories or ideas about how the word blue with the idea of blue came around? Well, as long as I never have to dress like a used car salesman to go to work, <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll be happy, you know. But, uh, um, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'd always, uh, um, I'd always thought that, uh, and, and just as a slight segue on that very subject, we're we're told in British Columbia that that Blue Lodge is not an appropriate term. It's a colloquial one, but when oh, uh, wait by by Grand Lodge, we're always referred to not refer to them as Blue Lodges, but as Craft Lodges is the more, mm, more like proper and, and accepted yeah I'll, I'll when when steve's here next time i'll get him to back me up on that because he's he would have he would have had some of those conversations too but there's there's something i read somewhere in a in in the it might have been in the grand lodge officer's guide i'm not sure but yeah that that blue lodge is an improper term it should be should be craft lodge but somehow blue has always been associated with the you know the the first three degrees of freemasonry and of course you know the the buildings both the interiors and the exteriors are often painted blue so i think it's a i think it's a fairly straightforward uh association um especially as like you talk about the red lodge and then everything going in, into a, a hundred other degrees in 20 different directions uh, you know the each with a seeming color palette of its own yeah, it's, I feel like blue is definitely the color that I most associate with masonry, independent of that term. Mm -hmm. I mean, our our aprons are blue. The the you know, it's there's like you said, the blue are most of the lodges I've been in. The, there's blue in the carpeting or the rooms or the the whatever. It's it's definitely associated with it. I will say that uh, <clears throat> I I just happen to know off the top of my head. That's not because I googled it or anything. That uh, according to Coyle's encyclopedia, uh, <laughs> blue has long been associated with immortality, eternity, and fidelity. So okay. maybe that's where it came from. Coyle generally knew what he was talking about. Uh, well, I, 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 that's my go-to downstairs is my, my, my rather thick uh, Coyle's encyclopedia. I would encourage every Freemason to own a copy of it. Maybe this, yeah. maybe this blue was on sale. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, well, that's, 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 uh, you know, it, it, it's very possible. But I, I would agree though, that it, if, if, when they when they started building buildings, if they did paint the interior of the ceiling, whether it's a cloudy blue ceiling or starry decked heaven, blue certainly played a part of it. And when you go into a room, you often look up, and that's a heavy color, a weighty color in the room. Mm -hmm. So I could see how that. But I have found another thing I'm gonna steal from Canada, Matt. Craft lodges. <laughs> I've I've been able to uh, those guys that listen that the few that listen that are part of our lodge our we have our leadership meeting I call it now I was their officers meeting and there were some few guys sticking around and I want they weren't officers but I don't want them to feel excluded so I call it our leadership meeting immediately follows our temple board meeting it's a week before our stated meeting to kind of plan so we we have this meeting where we discuss all the items and often we don't really vote on it but often come to an agreement on it. Sounds a lot like a board of general purposes. <laughs> yeah, we, I can't call, we call that. them planning meetings instead of officer meetings for, for the same yeah. reason. So I, I was also going to say it sounds a little bit like voter fraud too, which is uh, something <laughs> that comes comes up an awful lot in conversations these days as well. So, you know, but, yeah. yeah that's a yeah, Liv living living here in a province where we still haven't a, a couple of weeks later still haven't quite sorted out our provincial election yet, but we're working on it. 
I haven't heard anything about fires or anything, so it must be a must be. Yeah, a yeah. Well, wrong time of the year, but uh, you know. Well, no, I mean, for, based on the elections, give it. Give us a week here. Oh, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Wednesday or Thursday, I'm guessing <laughs> there'll, there'll be activity in the news. Yeah. So, yeah, pulling the curtain aside, we're recording this uh, the Sunday before oh, true. Uh, November fifth. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be an interesting week. That will already have passed. <laughs> yep. Interesting week uh, coming this week, regardless. Hopefully, of, Hopefully it will not be an interesting week. Hopefully it'll be I, a dull, I, I, uncommentable week. That would be fantastic. Commentable? Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so the the next symbol he sort of comments on is, uh, assuming we're done discussing symbols in general, we talked about the Blue Lodge briefly. The number three is sort of the next one that, mm-hmm. again, it's one of those very universal symbols in my mind that freemasonry being a well what i think of anyway as an amalgamation of many other schools of thought uh the number three i mean what in, in masonry what there's three degrees and three principal officers and three of everything it seems like um uh it's everywhere the triangle the yes do you guys have have thoughts on that one or is that I, I was thinking that there must be, uh, that must have been done by design. And I've never actually done enough research. I'll have to Wikipedia, um, the number three, because I mean, it's it's even outside of Freemasonry. It's a very, very um, uh, well-known and, and, and powerful and, and, you know, uh, deeply studied number. Uh, and I, I guess, you know, I, I, I've, you know, the, the, again, for, for those of us, of the Christian faith, you know, they, they you know, they were, were referred to as Trinitarian Christians of, of three into one. Um, and it's the, it's the first of the, you know, they, there's two other important numbers. And I can't remember if he gets into them five and seven, you know, which we associate with a certain degree. Um, and it's, it's the first in order. It's the first of those, those three numbers. And even yeah, falling into Scottish right and, and others, there's a, I forget what the name of it is, the, the, the pyramid or the triangle made of all the, the different points within it where they have the candles and the, ah, I should just, I should not have started talking, but yeah, the, 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 the three is definitely carried throughout you know, masonry, even in other, um, appendant bodies. Yeah. And he, he alludes to that even the ancient Egyptians and the Greeks and all of them all had generally three primary, deities if you will or or uh, uh, yeah yeah um, <laughs> yeah yeah but they you know rome was ruled by a triumvirate for a while and then ancient education was based around the trivia or the the trivia the three paths mm-hmm. um grammar rhetoric and logic you know it, it, it's something that that uh show you know we're, we talk about um the the the, the three three general phases of, 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 uh, a man's life, you know, uh, uh, youth, adulthood, and old age, mm-hmm. you know, where we, or, yeah. Maiden yeah. mother crone or, yep. Yep. It's, okay. I, you just blew my mind to take a step back. The, the trivia thing, I've never heard it expressed that way before. I knew the, that the trivia refers to the, the grammar, rhetoric, and logic, but I never, heard it expressed as the three paths that's yeah yeah three 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 trivia and then followed by the the uh the the quadrivia okay which would have been um uh mathematics geometry um music and astronomy music and astronomy right so they're your 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 quadrivia you know so your four four paths the advanced education that 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 youngsters in the in the in the greek and roman worlds were exposed to but yeah the the trivia is the um, that's your, your three, three paths. So, uh, which, which was the basis of everything. I, don't think I, I, I just never thought of it that way. Cool. I, th- I think this one's done. <laughs> <laughs> you, you big my yeah. deal, sir. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> so on that note, I feel like we're, we're about to wrapping up time. <laughs> Is a uh, do you, 
we I think what do we fit in two symbols technically the blue lodge and, and the number three I, I yeah think we he, got two symbols in so well he he indicates that according to coils as a by magic uh, there's 90 different symbols mentioned in the three degrees and so we, we've just touched the survey I don't think he goes into all 90 but he does in the next <laughs> section talk about the tracing board and the oft used symbols in our degrees so that's sure. right. if, he, if, if he doesn't go into all 90 we certainly can <laughs> <laughs> We'll be talking about this book forever. Yes, yeah, that's right. All right. Well, on that note, well, thank you all for listening to the Working Tools Podcast. And I, I should have said earlier, uh, Stephen couldn't be here this evening to, to record with us. He's he's uh, at a family event. And apparently family is more important than, than the three of us. So, uh, yeah, we'll let him. Uh, hopefully he's having a good time out there. And uh, with that, thank you all for listening to the Working Tools Podcast. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>